Hot day, hot day. Always a hot day in the Philippines. Well, I am working on another little project out here on the boat. And today the project is putting in this turbocharger boost gauge. Turbo boost gauge. Um, this is a manual gauge that uses a line. There is over at the intake tube coming across from the turbo, there is a port right there that's got a um, blank down in it right now, a plug, and I'll remove that plug and then this fitting goes in there. It's already made to have one, it's an option. Uh, the thing is, it's limited on how long that tube is, and I don't know how much luck here where I'm at of getting a longer tube. I kind of stretched it out and measured it, and I think that without a problem, it really wants to curl back up when I'm trying to do this, and I don't have another hand. But I think from where I kind of taped it off to a handle here and pulled it back straight, kind of mapping how far it would reach, I think I can put it right here. So I've got some of the boat gauges loose right now. I've been doing other wiring, but right up here on the dash, there's this little spot here. And I believe I can just drill that out, put this in there. Um, if I close the cabin door and go into the head, there is a access panel in there that I can get in behind to the steering when the door's closed and make a little hole in the side of the gunnel right there that the tube can pass right on through and head down and head back here. And I'm gonna do a little toe pointing. It goes right there, right there. So uh, that's what I'm working on here right now. Somewhere here I laid a hole saw earlier. That here it is right there. And I made me a little template. So this carton that the gauge came in, the gauge was slid down this little circle and this was a big flat piece of cardboard so then I went to my toolbox and this nifty little hole saw that you can put different size blades in is the exact size to look at that perfecto so it looks like it's all gonna be a win main thing that really is just I get started dead in the middle so I can just make me a little cross mark with measuring tape here make me a little pile of holes so this ain't dancing around when I put it up there and that'll be the easy way on that I really don't even need that little template so that's where I'm at at the moment right here
that worked out pretty well. I mean, that is just spot on for that little spot right there. Uh, I put that little shade that it comes with, that little hood light, a little visor, and I figured that'd keep a little extra sun off of it, not only for seeing it, but maybe keep the UV rays from making the gauge turn, you know, a little premature or something out in the sun all the time. So uh, now I need to go in behind here and I need to try to get that ran around, that little stiff hose ran around to the motor. So now we're going to close the cabin door here. All right. And we're going to open the door to the head. And there's my jumbo size access panel that I cut out. I need to make a new cover for it. I doubled the size of it. And I've told in a previous video why they uh, get these life jackets out here. I've just got some stuff kind of stored in here. Throwable life preservers, some life jacket stuff. Not using the head up on the hard right now you only had to up here and you need to get down in here and clean this track and there's different things you need to look inside and in here and reach you got fuses here you got all this stuff and before you couldn't even get your face up in here your head to look in to do anything the opening was so small and if you could have an access panel this big, why can't you have an access panel this big? Because there's no difference. There we go. And so there's the back side of the gauge I just put in. All right, so as you see, this little curly stuff's kind of hard to deal with. So I'm not going to try to deal with a camera down in here and try to stuff that through. I'm going to get it through that hole. And then I'm going to need to crawl down in the aft berth, get a hold of this, and then move it along that gunnel back to the engine bay back there and hopefully it'll reach we'll see okay i got that through wasn't too bad so now i need to crawl down into <laughs> as i said the aft berth there's another light all right so it should be right up in there yep there it is Hanging right there. And I need to pass it along through here. And don't pull it hard and kink it. If you ever pull a kink into it, it's pretty much just toast. So, I uh, will once again get, actually the light from this camera really helps. So I guess I'll continue to record while I work it back this way. Don't kink it. Don't kink it. I gotta get some of that coming down. Can't reach it. Okay, how do I get this to untwist? Don't kink it. All right, I am gonna free my hands up a second. All right, tell you what, I've lost so much weight, my shorts won't stay up on me. I'm gonna have to dig in a suitcase in the garage and dig for some more of my old shorts. All right, so should be here now. There it is right there. I just don't know if it's gonna be enough to make it. To this little port right here so it does make it it's kind of in the way of where I want it to be I wish it would go on around back there the back I tell you I'll end up breaking this I'll end up kinking this I might look find something to extend this it will make it over here but not with the extra play that I wish it had let's see if we can find an island to fit that I am hoping that is the right thread. Well, I did get it on here. But and uh, right now, Miss Melinda wants to go swimming out here in the dark. So we're about to hit the water. So Let's do this, Melly, baby. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, man, look at that. 
Isn't that just beautiful? Look at that, man. Look at that. I'll turn the light back on phone. Let's see what they're doing here. Let's see what's happening out here. Oh, they're pulling the net. Hello, how are you? So you see him out there right now. They're pulling the net in the water by the moonlight. And shrimp boats are out right now too. Good morning, everybody. Check out this early morning moon, man. This is beautiful. Early morning moon, man. The sun's going to rise like right up on one side as a bright... 5, 10 or 5, yeah, and a bright moon landing on one side and a bright sun about to come from the other. Look at that. That is not a sunrise. That is a moon setting. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> uh, so beautiful.
Well, I painted that boat just in time this morning because it got just good enough time. It got sealed over and it started raining. And thank goodness it's a oil-based paint, not a water-based paint. So uh, hopefully a little moisture on it isn't affecting it none. But it's definitely turned to a rainy day. Look at it pouring down right there right now. Wow. I want to check this tape though I might want to go ahead and try to pull it off uh, there we go nice clean line nice clean line I like it beautiful beautiful Hit a piece of binder. Nice. Well, that rain I said was coming. It caught up with me. Uh, while I was out here, man, moving faster than I thought. <laughs> uh, I'm going to dodge out to the other side over here. I'll peel the tape right out here in the rain. Nice. Nice, nice. Down in here on my boat again, the Sea Ray Sundancer 240 with uh, Mercury's of diesel in it here. This is my little fuel pump setup um, right there. There's the little electric lift pump, fuel pump, and that guarantees me to bleed these filters fast or anything. If I have to change them on water, keep a good supply. And what I did here earlier is I put in this fuse right here. Put in this fuse holder. There is a grounding block right here. Had a blank on the end, it got it grounded there. Um, and in the wiring from the 5.7 liter, there was a extra wire and a harness that I was able to use that uh, this diesel didn't need. And I turned that into a hot leg coming up here from the dash on the key switch up there and I need to pick up a relay I have it wired direct up there right now when the key is on the pump runs but I'll either try to go to an auto parts place here or I may just order it online the relay is taking the load not the wire directly from the ignition switch and then as I do this I label these so I print off these labels and I show there's this is a fuel pump here and it's a 15 amp fuse at the other end too up on the dash and behind there if anybody ever opens that up any wiring or anything I do I label it everywhere I label it and that way it keeps down confusion further down the road um, down in here right now we will talk about a few things so some of these wires here turns out I'm not going to need um, there was options on the diesel engine there was options on what you could have for gauges some of them would have gauges some of them would have lights some of them would have a deluxe setup which was gauges and lights and alarms and they had wires in the harness according but it didn't mean they were used and i did notice some of these were dead ending before so some of these on the engine side um they're 
they're lame ducks. I'll probably just roll them up and um, shorten them down, put them inside of an electric wrap on there, uh, keep them protected, and if I ever need it for anything, I guess it's there. But um, that's pretty much that on that story. I have all the vitals already connected, and I'll be getting all that wiring harness sealed up here pretty soon. I'm heat shrinking everything. So right now, I'm underneath here working at this tilt pump. And uh, right here on this pump, I put in a video I showed in the past, I put new solenoids on here, see? And now, the thing, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. And it's always been this plug right here. This is it's kind of hard the rubbers got old and it had this hose clamp that clamped it down and it had a little place that you put this and clamp it but the problem is is that the connections are bad in here the rubbers old I've already started working that's why this one's cut and I'm just bypassing it and wiring these direct up to the pump the fact is is that if you need to replace this pump man you can just undo the connections just like right here at simple places there's three wires and they're all really easy to get to so uh, it's not an issue it's uh, uneventful you got it here's two of them right here one here one here there's a fuse holder right here and so I'm just splicing it in direct there's a connector underneath here and then I've got this heat shrink and I'll come back and seal that really good so that's what I'm underneath here doing right now is bypassing that little cruddy plug I can't just put a new one on it either which way you're cutting the wires even to put a new one so I'm putting these on I did buy some of those that you crimp in and then you just heat it up and it melts a or actually you don't even crimp it you just heat it and it melts solder in but I'm just going ahead and using these crimp ones with the um, little heat shrink sleeve over the outside of it um, let me take this plug apart I'll show it to you so here's this plug apart and I've cleaned these and cleaned them and they corrode right back up once they start corrosion on them it's hard to stop them um, it's years of corrosion it's it's down in here I'm sure it's down into the rubber and into the wire and same thing on this side too there's times it'd be let's see you can see the corrosion in there right now and uh it's just not worth a darn and look at that it looks like it's been hot before too you see that how one's kind of deformed and you can see the white corrosion down in them and i have used different contact cleaners and different things and they're just they're just no good so like i say i've already started cutting the wire um crimping it in direct and you really don't need a plug if you have to work on it just undo a couple connections and it's done anyway that's firecrackers going off it is bronga election time so you'll know what not this was videoed on um and so they're shooting fireworks there's a local firework maker so don't worry about my safety here <laughs> if you hear that noise um this is that old plug it's all chopped away here's the three wires i've got heat shriek on them i'm about to go get a uh just use a lighter and heat those up and get it all heat shrink down on there yeah and then i'll get the little loom cover back up on it right there and it should be good to go i'll test it and make sure they're all functioning and I'll be so happy to be past that because every time I get ready to raise or lower it, it's uh, messing up in this connection right here and that's not safe and it's annoying as just, I don't want to say no bad words. <laughs> well, it turns out I got to go right back down there. The little fuse holder that I showed you, it's all corroded up inside also. And, um, it's supposed to have a little spring lock in it that keeps close contact down that little glass fuse. The spring's corroded away. There's no hope for it. The rubber's really hard on that too, just like it was on the plug. So I'm going to eliminate it. Now, I don't have another fuse holder handy here right now, I don't believe. But here's the thing that confuses me on that. I think 
that these boat manufacturers, they buy that unit already made. It comes to them already made up, just a, a ready to install unit. And it has that little loom there on it, that little wiring harness. And it has a fuse there. But the fact is, up here in the fuse box, I checked. And there is a fuse already in the fuse box. Up here where it's nice and safe. Not back there where there's so much salt water. Um, down near the bells and on there. It's double fused. Another crimp connector. Another chopping. But also another crawling back down in that hole again. <laughs> uh... So here I go back again. So this is that little fuse holder. Really hard to get apart. The rubber's not got old. And I sprayed WD-40 down inside. That's all this oil you see. But if I had videoed this prior to that, you will see that it is heavily corroded down inside. You can see some of it there. And the fuse itself. Uh, super hard to come out I mean I'm pulling so I'm probably going to break the glass and then end up cutting my hand uh, there's even corrosion come off on the fuse even this fuse you can see it corroded on the inside look at that you see that it's not blown but it is corroded so let's set those there and up inside of here it's supposed to have action to where that'll spring and it's just no good I've already I removed it this does not fit down tight on it, it doesn't have a, a good spring action um, just not not good just overall not good well that fixed that so now I have my uh, tilt up and down working again that's pretty good um, on to the next thing we will begin our exploring journeys around some local islands and stuff over here and I think you're really gonna love that content when it comes around and we'll also sometimes be taking a little Bonka boat Melinda's gonna join into the videos more and we start going out on that and doing that and all so if any of you miss Melinda she will be in the videos here soon and we look forward to some great adventures to go do some of these things with. And we're hoping it's something you'll really enjoy on this vlog. It'll be a different perspective than probably you'll get on most channels here.